And we're live, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, watch collectors, watch nerds, crazy people, the mentally ill, which is, you know, essentially all of us. I'd like to welcome you to Mark Vlogs Watches and thank you for joining me while I slowly roast in a car at 90 degrees with the windows closed. Maybe I should open. I'm just afraid it'll get a little noisy if I do that. Oh, look, the... Okay, so sorry for being a little disorganized here, but I'm going to like kind of pop to the point. Um, first, quick fist watch check. I am wearing a, um, a Rolex Submariner black. And um, I have a problem, guys. I have a problem. I have four different Rolex Submariners. Four. Nobody needs four. I have this one, which is ceramic, modern, uh, chromolite, modern, class, etc. Uh, what else do I have? I've got... Um, I've got a Hulk. <laughs> I've got a Hulk. And then I have two sort of pre-ceramic ones, the 14060M, which is a no-date transitional sub. It uh, doesn't have tritium, um, but it does have the jingly jangly bracelet and a an aluminum bezel. And I've also got the 16613, which is a uh, two-toned jingly jangly sub with a blue. It's a blue, bluesy. Anyway, um, I'm going to sell the older stuff. So yeah, if you're in the market for any of those, you know, get a hold of me. Eventually, Archie and I are going to make a sale video because I think he's got a Patek or two he'd like to part with. And I've got way too many Rolex. So I'd like to get rid of some of that nonsense myself. But what I think we want to talk about today a little bit here is uh, what's going on with Rolex. Now, I know it's been a nutball year. This has been super crazy. Uh, 2020. So it's like a smack in the face. So thank you for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing and being with me. But I think at the end of the day, um, Rolex is going to make their announcement next month. So, you know, just about a, just about three weeks from now or so, Rolex will be telling us what's coming. I'm trying to stabilize the camera here, guys. This is an impromptu video. Rolex will be telling us what's coming, and they're going to do that, um, you know, shortly, about three weeks. Okay, so I have made the following predictions. I'm already on record as saying, first, the Hulk will be discontinued. Now, I can't tell you the, the level of probability on that, but I'd say that it's about 75%. You know, I'm leaving <laughs> some wiggle room, guys. But I have, a, uh, I have a source who has provided pretty darned accurate information uh, up until now who tells me that the, the Hulk should be discontinued. Now, I got to say, uh, if you're in the market for a Hulk, in my opinion, that means you should buy it right now. Yes, there's a premium on it, but the premium is a bit lower than it has been uh, in the past. And if that thing gets discontinued, well, the premium is going to leap super high. I think you should be able, I didn't check today, but you know, up until like a week or so ago, you could get a Hulk for about $13,000, maybe thirteen five, which puts a premium after taxes of like, I don't know, around $3,000 on it. But if they discontinue it, what's what we have to look at is the model of the Batman when it was discontinued. Actually, it wasn't even fully really discontinued, right? Because what they did is they upgraded it to the Batgirl. Um, but even so, it, it jumped um, up from about 12 to like 18. And then it settled you know, down 16, 15, 14, which is right around 13, 14 now. Anyway, what I think is if the Hulk gets discontinued, it's going to have a quick leap to around 18, and then I think it'll eventually settle down more into the range of um, 15, 16, somewhere in there. Yeah, but uh, so if you want one, I would get it now. Premium is a bit lower. Um, the Submariner, well, they're not gonna discontinue that, but I also have it on a pretty darn good authority uh, that they will be doing the, uh, the new movement. This has got the, um, what is it, the 3135? Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And they'll put the 3235 in there, which has a um, slightly better shock resistance, a little better anti-magnetism, and 24 hours or so more power reserves. So it'll pop up to like, you know, 72 hours of power reserve, which will be very nice. Everybody is saying that they're going to do that. That is not um, a Mark Goldberg unique proposition here. However, I also have it on quite good authority that they will be narrowing the lugs. You, can, you see that this has the super case. You see those big fat wide lugs kind of squares the watch off. And um, an awful lot of Rolex collectors uh, complain that they liked the elegance of the pre-super case watch. 
Um, but most of us are getting older. And so we also simultaneously appreciate what is called the maxi dial, which is those bigger hands and those big hour plots. Those are a lot bigger than our most pre-ceramic Rolex subs. Um, you know, the exception to the rule there is the, um, the Kermit. The Kermit was a very, very clever watch because what they did was they used the old pre-ceramic case. It does have the green bezel, but it's aluminum. And, uh, but they put the maxi dial on there. So it's like super legible and easy to read. And it has a black face, unlike the Hulk, which has green everything. Okay, I digress. What I really wanted to tell you is that um, I predict that the lugs are going to be slimming down a little bit and that they will be tapered by um, a, a couple of millimeters. So it's not going to be quite the super case that they're not just going to plunk the new movement in the same old case. They're going to alter the dimensions of the case a little bit. And um, that will probably mean that the bracelet from this will not fit the new one. So if you're one of those people who likes to kind of like buy bracelets, swap them, move them around and stuff, I don't think that's going to work. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not think that you can take the Oyster bracelet off of the Batman and take off the Jubilee bracelet of the Batgirl and then put that oyster from the Batman on it. I don't think it quite fits. And that's because there is an infinitesimal change in the lugs when you look at the, um, when you look at the Batman to the Batgirl. Like if you hold up a Batman and a Batgirl together, um, those lugs are just a little bit different. Now, if you're looking just at the Batgirl, you're not going to see it because they, Rolex moves at glacial pace. They move so slowly, so carefully. Um, it's it's annoying. They don't do anything. They don't do anything fast and interesting. You know, until they do, then like bam, you know, there's no Hulk, and then one day there's a Hulk. So anyway, I, what are we going to call the new case? Um, I, I think uh, I, I nominate that we call it the not so super case. Um, but look, this is a prediction. Now I can't. So I can't. It's a prediction based on information that I have from a source. So I can't say it's 100% sure, but I'm going to give it a probability, a Goldberg probability rating of about 90%, which is to say high confidence. We have high confidence on this as incoming. Um, so uh, am I interested in the new Submariner? Well, I don't think you're going to like look at the, the I don't think you're going to like look at the case and go, bam, wow, that's super different. I don't think so. I think to the eye visually, it's going to be super similar. Um, so what that means is, you know, am I interested in that little bit of extra shock protection and that extra 24 hours worth of power reserve? The answer is nah. You know, I, I don't care about that. What, what's going to happen to the to the price of this guy here? You know, people say that it might like climb because the reference number is going to change, which technically means this one will be discontinued. And I expect this watch to be discontinued in only three weeks. Well, I don't expect the price of it to skyrocket. You know, I, I don't. And the reason that I don't expect it to skyrocket is because, you know, they've been making this for what, like, I think 12 years now. Again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I, I, I no, is it 12? I think they've been making this since, excuse me, since 2012. They've made a lot, a lot of these watches. So, um, oh, watches and giggles, 2010. Okay, so 10 years. Um, so this watch, how many of them would they have made in 10 years? Now, I know they're pretty hard to get right now, but if you go back a few years, they weren't, right? So I feel like there's a lot of these floating around. Um, I think what's going to, I think the trajectory of the price on the current ceramic sub is going to be pretty similar to what happened to pricing on the black, black, black GMT, which was uh, discontinued and not replaced. <coughs> and, um, so I, I think you'll be, you know, these will trade for like around their retail, even, you know, a bit above their retail, but I don't expect them to like, you know, go crazy in price. I could be wrong, but hey, you know, let's wait and see. Okay, so those are the changes coming there. Now, in the comments, you guys are asking what's going to happen to the gold ones and to the, uh, to the two tones. Okay, I'm just going to give you a, another guess. Um, I think that the changes that I just talked about are going to hit the, the two tone probably at the exact same time as they do on the, um, on the, on the steel. But um, I think it's going to take one or two years before those changes migrate over to the entire, uh, into, into the full gold. 
Um, they just make and sell fewer of, fewer of the full gold. I think they'll probably have a better stockpile of those and they're not going to want to uh, obsolete them until they clear the pipeline out. I don't want to mention the authorized dealer, but um, there's one that I know of who, you know, had one, um, a, a gold one came in uh, and it wasn't sold. Uh, it's probably sold now, but it, that's a pretty expensive watch. Gorgeous, by the way. I got to say, when I grow up, I want one um, because it's uh, it's gold with a sunray blue dial and a blue bezel ceramic. So it's just gorgeous. But I do think it will be a hot minute before the uh, changes hit that gold. So, I, you know, look, that's another thing. The uh, the the Daytona was updated, but they still haven't put a ceramic bezel on the on the gold Daytona. It's still all gold. Right. So I'm just saying. Rolex moves in slow and mysterious ways, and they, they tend to update their gold stuff like last. Now, what's going to happen elsewhere in the line? I don't. I, I made a whole video about a, a new Yachtmaster coming out. Um, it's going to be the 42 millimeter in, um, in stainless steel uh, with that um, Cerachrome bezel, just like the, um, the, the black ceramic one with the, with the raised numbers. So that should be coming. I think I'm the unique predictor of that one, but I got that information from a really good source. So I'm going to give it a, a Goldberg probability rating of about um, 80%. I'm, I'm, I've, I've got high confidence there. So, um, and, and they have not, and it's, I believe, I can't swear to you, this part I don't know for sure, but I think it's going to be on a, um, on the, uh, what do they call that? Oyster rubber, <laughs> you know. Uh, Rolex has all these great names for, you know, but basically they're rubber strap. That's, I think it's going to be on that, not a bracelet, but um, it's going to be in steel. And right now they only make it in white gold. So if you, um, or maybe they'll put it on steel, a uh, steel bracelet to distinguish it from the white gold one. But basically they're about to screw over every oyster flex. It's called, thank you, watch habit, oyster flex. So um, I, I think if you bought a white gold one, you know, which is what, around $25,000. And now you're going to be able to go buy a, a steel one for like $10,000 less. I think you might feel a little bad about that, but I believe that's what's going to happen there. So uh, what is going to happen next? Um, I don't know. <laughs> that's really all I got, except we're waiting to see what they're going to do with the uh, 42 millimeter um, Explorer 2, polar or black. Um, apparently it's 50th anniversary is next year. So... I suspect that ultimately it's going to lose its steel bezel and it will get a ceramic one, which I think will, will, will be kind of cool. I have the polar version. I like it. But the, um, that steel bezel is subject to scratching and banging and dinging, right? And when you bash it around enough, what happens is the paint tends to just like fall out of the, of the steel bezel. That was a problem with the Daytona and they solved that by putting the ceramic bezel on there. Um, so I do think it's a pretty good barometer of what's going to happen to the 42 millimeter Explorer, but is that going to happen now or are they going to wait until uh, next year? I think by next year, uh, there's probably a 75% probability that it happens, but I'm going to split the difference in terms of whether it happens this year or next. And I'm going to say it's got a 35% chance of happening this year. And then it goes up to 75% by next year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, Bruce says that he thinks they're going to, Bruce Williams, Bruce Williams, the Bruce Williams channel. Thanks for joining us, Bruce. Bruce thinks they're going to focus their changes mostly on the sub to see what happens. Um, and that may very well be. It's a very conservative company. Um, and they are uh, definitely uh, altering that sub. But they're doing it in ways that are going to make it really hard for the eye to tell. Um, and um, uh, a punter in the comments just asked if they're discontinuing the Hulk. And as I said earlier in this video, I think they will. I do think that they will. Um, well, guys, that's what I've got for you right now. I'm sorry that I haven't made videos lately, but I promise I will be back and uh, I'll make you a bunch more. I've got things that I've got to review. So yeah, talk to you soon. Goldberg, got to find the button. Peace out.